guys, I have said a few times that you should not rely on cardio to lose fat. That it is not ideal for fat loss. And it's not. If you're trying to lose fat, I recommend not using cardio to do so. But since this is the internet, people have interpreted this to mean that I think cardio is the worst thing on earth and that it's unhealthy and that if you walk more than two steps during the day that you're not going to be able to lose fat because cardio is the devil. So I just wanted to take a minute to have a little chit chat about cardio. Here's the deal with cardio. Most people, especially women, believe that you have to do cardio in order to lose fat. But most people also hate cardio. They detest running, they don't like swimming, they think rowing sucks, and so they either go to the gym hating their lives all the time or they just don't do it at all. And I used to be exactly like this too. I used to think that cardio not only was the only way to lose fat, but I thought it was my only option for exercise. Like, I wasn't even aware that lifting really existed or was an option for me as a female. I thought that getting on the elliptical every day and just killing myself for an hour was the only way to maintain my weight and maintain my health. I was basically a slave to the elliptical. And as such, I didn't do it very often. I hated it. I never wanted to exercise. It sucked. But the truth is that standard cardio like rowing, elliptical, running, etc., is not only not necessary for fat loss, but it's not necessary to be healthy, it's not necessary to get abs, it's not necessary to get lean, it's just, it's not necessary at all. But here's where the lies that we're all told about cardio get even bigger. Not only is cardio just not necessary for fat loss, it's also not ideal for fat loss. Using cardio is not the best way to lose fat and keep it off long term. And this is the entire point that I want to make with this video, just that cardio is not ideal for fat loss long term. That's it. I'm not claiming that cardio is bad for you, that you shouldn't do cardio, that you shouldn't worry about your cardiovascular health. Certainly not that you should be afraid to like walk to school every day because it'll prevent you from losing fat. I'm not even saying that you can't lose fat with cardio because you can. All I'm saying is that it is not ideal. Since I already have a few different videos and Instagram posts that go more in depth into different aspects of what I'm about to talk about, what I'm actually going to do is compile them all in one big email, nice and organized with explanations and descriptions and everything so that you guys can like see all of the resources that I have available to you. And I'll send that out to everyone on my email list in probably the next week. So if you aren't on my email list and you're interested in getting that big compilation about cardio email, you can just go to misfitandnerdy.com slash join, drop your email in there and I will be sending it to you in about a week. So if you're excited to learn about how freeing yourself from the treadmill is actually a step in the right direction when it comes to long-term fat loss, please give this video a big thumbs up and make sure you hit that subscribe button down there to see more videos from me. And while you're doing that, I'm going to start getting in to the nitty gritty. Your body is an adaptation machine. It does not want to lose weight or gain weight. It wants to stay right where it is. So if you change something, it will adapt accordingly. The idea of starvation mode is pretty well understood and kind of works in the same way as the body adapting to cardio. So let's start there. And by starvation mode, I don't mean like when you're under eating and you start gaining fat because that's not a real thing. I just mean when you're in a deficit for a prolonged amount of time and you stop losing fat because your body adapts. When you're in a calorie deficit, your body does what it can to get you out of that calorie deficit because it doesn't want to burn up your energy stores, which is your fat. So your body slows down your metabolism to compensate for the deficit that you're putting yourself in. So let's say your original TDEE or your maintenance calories are 2000 calories and you want to be in a 500 calorie deficit to start losing weight. So you start eating at 1500 calories. This goes well for quite a while and then your body starts to adapt. It wants to get rid of the deficit. So it slows down your metabolism until you're burning fewer and fewer and fewer and fewer and fewer calories until you're burning 1500 calories. So now you're burning as much as you're eating and your weight loss plateaus. And it's the same with cardio. So let's say again, your original TDEE or maintenance calories was 2000 calories and you want to lose weight. So you start running for an hour a day because that's what everyone tells us to do when you want to lose weight. You're supposed to just go for a run to lose fat. So you start running for an hour a day to burn an extra 500 calories. But let's say that you also just for the sake of simplicity, keep eating 2000 calories. So now you are in a 500 calorie deficit. But again, 
your body's going to want to start adapting to this deficit you've created. Your body's going to think, okay, so this running thing, we've been doing it for a while. We're probably going to keep doing it every day. So we need to become more efficient with calories. We need to maximize the use of every single calorie that this human is consuming. And a more efficient metabolism translates to a slower metabolism. So you start out burning the 2,500 calories a day. Over time, you're going to burn fewer and fewer and fewer calories, even though you're still running that extra hour every day until you're now only burning 2,000 calories. So now your fat loss is actually going to stop because you're eating as much as you're burning. So clearly this situation is not ideal. One of my previous videos on this topic that I will send out in my email, but I'll also link it down there and up there for your convenience, goes into more of the science behind this. It looks at an actual study that was done on a hunter-gatherer tribe and they measured their calorie expenditure. And this hunter-gatherer tribe that was extremely active was burning as many calories as sedentary office workers because their metabolism had adapted to burn fewer calories even though they had such a high level of activity. So be sure to go check that video out if you want more of the science behind this. So here's the real kicker when it comes to cardio for fat loss and why I really don't recommend it. You started out maintaining weight on 2,000 calories without any form of cardio, without having to run an hour a day. Now, after running an hour a day for so long, you're maintaining weight on 2,000 calories while having to run an extra hour a day. So as soon as you get frustrated with your weight loss plateau and you quit running, or as soon as you just get fed up with running because you're one of the majority that just does not like running and sees it as absolute torture and just hates it, like me, then you're going to gain all of the weight back because now your metabolism is slower and you need that extra running to maintain weight on your original calories. Or you end up getting sucked into the cycle that so many people get sucked into. You stop the running, you start gaining weight, and so you drop your calories a little. Maybe you have to drop them to 1,700 or 1,800 calories. You're chilling, you're maintaining weight on 1,700 or 1,800 calories, but you still want to lose weight. And so you start doing cardio again because you noticed that when you started doing cardio, you lost a ton of weight initially because yes, you do lose fat when you start doing cardio initially. And so you start doing that again, you plateau again, now your metabolism's even slower. And so you end up in this vicious cycle. And clearly this doesn't happen to everyone, especially if you know what you're doing, but most people don't understand the process of metabolic adaptation. And so they get trapped in this loop and don't understand why they're not losing fat, even though they feel like they're starving. So the TLDR for why cardio is not ideal for fat loss is that your body adapts to it and it slows down your metabolism to compensate. So if cardio isn't ideal for fat loss, what is? I think that resistance training to build muscle and build strength should be the foundation for any fat loss program, where cardio causes the body to slow down the metabolism and become efficient with calories, lifting actually makes the body inefficient with calories, and so it speeds up your metabolism. Cardio and resistance training actually send two completely different signals to the body that actually interfere with each other at the cellular level. Cardio is catabolic, meaning it breaks down. Lifting is anabolic, meaning it builds. And what it builds is muscle mass, and muscle is a very energy expensive tissue, which means it it not only requires more calories to just maintain your current muscle mass on your body, but it also requires a lot of calories when you're actively trying to build muscle. So the more muscle you have and the more muscle you're actively trying to build, the more calories your body needs. So in effect, resistance training speeds up the metabolism. I've had people ask me, doesn't your body adapt to lifting just as it does to cardio? And the short answer is no. And this is for two reasons. The first is that to prevent adaptation, you have to gradually increase intensity over time. This is true for both lifting and cardio. With cardio though, in order to increase the intensity, you have to either increase the speed, the duration, or the difficulty, so like the incline on the treadmill or like the resistance on the elliptical. Eventually, you would have to be sprinting marathons uphill every day. Like in order to keep adapting, you'd get to that point. Clearly not practical or fun or even good for you. But with lifting, you can play around with the sets, the reps, the rest time, and you can always increase weight. So you can keep your body adapting and keep increasing intensity without having to spend like six hours in the gym every day. And the second point about adaptation to lifting is that yes, there is some cardiovascular activity involved in lifting. It does get your heart rate up. It is actually a good cardiovascular workout. Like it works your heart. And so you do burn some calories through cardio while you're lifting. And yes, your body does adapt to this, but 
The overwhelming signal that is sent to your body while you're doing resistance training is the anabolic signal, the one that builds. And remember, anabolic and catabolic signals compete at a cellular level, and the winning one is the anabolic one. This is the signal that matters, and it's the one that keeps burning calories after you leave the gym. It's the signal that you don't adapt to as long as you keep adding weight. It's the one that turns you into a literal fat burning machine. Think of it this way, with cardio, you're manually burning calories in the gym. With resistance training in the gym, you're actually building the muscle that will in turn burn more calories for you throughout the day. So in summary of all of that, resistance training builds more muscle, which speeds up your metabolism, which ultimately makes long-term fat loss a lot easier. And it is for all of these reasons that I advocate for resistance training rather than cardio for fat loss. Hopefully that makes sense, but I do want to just clarify a few little things really quick. In the short term, cardio is actually very efficient for fat loss. It takes your body about two to three weeks to start adapting to cardio. So if you just wanted to like burn as much fat as possible in two weeks, you could totally just jump on the treadmill and run an extra five miles a day for two weeks and maximize your fat loss, use that to increase your calorie deficit, and you probably wouldn't suffer too much from very much metabolic adaptation or slowdown. It's when you keep doing it for weeks on end and that your body starts to adapt. So if you have more than like five or 10 pounds to lose, it's not the best strategy. And for all of you freaks out there who love cardio, I'm kidding, you're not freaks. Just most people hate cardio. I can't imagine enjoying cardio, but if you love it, that's great for you. For all of you people, there is nothing wrong with cardio. The only issue is that most people hate cardio, so they do it until they get to their goal weight and then they quit because they hate it and then they gain all the weight back because they slowed their metabolism down. But if you enjoy it and plan on continuing to do it no matter what your weight is, then do it. It's not going to slow your metabolism down to an unhealthy rate. It's not going to make you unhealthy. In fact, cardio is really, really good for your body. Just know that if you do stop suddenly for some reason, you will probably gain some fat back. That is the only drawback. But if you plan on doing cardio forever because you love it, then by all means, Run, forest, run. But speaking of cardio being very good for you, some people might be a little bit confused and maybe concerned that I said that cardio is not necessary for health. And when I say this, I mean traditional cardio, like running, elliptical, rowing, swimming, etc. Those are not necessary to be healthy. Cardiovascular activity, like working your heart, getting your heart rate up, very necessary to be healthy. You should 100% be doing regular physical activity that elevates your heart rate. But the nifty thing about resistance training is that it's a pretty darn good cardiovascular workout. Like, it works your heart really well. It's not gonna give you the cardiovascular endurance of someone who runs half marathons regularly, but it is enough to keep your heart very healthy. And one last quick thing that I get questions about all of the time with regards to this. I often advocate for taking 10,000 plus steps per day. Lots of people have been rightfully confused as to why I advocate for walking a lot, but not for cardio, because walking is a form of cardio but this is because they serve two entirely different purposes. I don't advocate for hitting a step count in order to burn more fat. The goal of hitting 10,000 steps is not to burn extra calories. So therefore, whether or not your metabolism adapts to it doesn't matter, because that's not the point. The purpose of setting a step goal is to help combat a sedentary lifestyle. Being sedentary can have so many negative effects on your health. Ideally, you would go on three to five walks spread out throughout the day just to prevent yourself from sitting in one place all day. And yes, if you stop doing these steps all of a sudden, you will probably gain weight. But ideally, you should not start being sedentary for the rest of your life. You should actively try to be active throughout the day. So, theoretically, the adaptation shouldn't matter. It's kind of a moot point. And you definitely don't have to use a step count to hit this goal. You could get like a thousand steps a day, but if you set a timer for like every hour, every two hours, and just get up, stretch, you know, you can dance for a few minutes, you can do a few body weight exercises every hour or two, you could do some resistance band work, doesn't have to be a step count. The goal is just to be active. I personally just set a step count because it not only keeps me active, but it also gets me out of the house, exposes me to the sunshine, to the fresh air, it makes me feel really good, it helps me mentally, and so that's my favorite way to combat my otherwise sedentary lifestyle because I 
work at a desk all day basically. And I think that is everything I have to say about cardio for today. Hopefully it answers everyone's questions. If it doesn't, please leave whatever questions you do have in the comments down below. And if there are a ton of questions, maybe I'll do a follow-up video to this to explain anything that wasn't clear, or I can just try to answer your questions in the comments. And in the meantime, if you did like this video, please give it a big thumbs up because it really does support me and my channel and I really appreciate it. Please do share this video with your friends and your family and all of your cardio friends that think that they need to be doing cardio to lose fat. You can just open up a whole new world for them so that they don't have to be stuck on the treadmill for hours every single day. You can have your friend back. You can go out to lunch with them. Then you can go lift with them. It'll be a great time. So share this video with those people. Hit that subscribe button if you want to see more videos. Make sure you join my email list if you do want to get my big cardio compilation email, notification button, all the other good stuff. I'll see you very soon. Bye.